Hai hai semuanya, gue Zeno uh, Gue pengen lanjutin lagi game Alfred Siska Vertigo hmm, Terakhir kemarin kita uh, Itu ya Masuk ke masa kecilnya si Ed Terus si Ed itu Yang ngejelasin kalau dia waktu kecil itu Kayak bahagia Tapi ternyata pas dihipnotis sama Dr. Lewis Itu dia malah Ternyata banyak banget cerita-cerita yang dia sembunyikan oke penasaran banget sih sama cerita-cerita selanjutnya kita lanjutin aja ya yuk ke game Oke, okay, sekarang si dokternya itu ternyata nginap di motel Kayaknya nggak terlalu jauh dari tempatnya si Ed Soalnya kalau jauh pulang pergi capek juga Order something for dinner, go over after session notes Oke, okay. order dinner dulu kali ya Ini kok pajangannya miring. Kenapa? Kita nggak bisa masuk ke toilet lagi. Ini pasti buat ya order dinner. Ini buat telepon. Hmm. Order dinner dulu sih. paling benar juga lapar lagi Mrs. Lomas, is there anything I can get you? Um, you don't do dinners by any chance, do you? No, but there is a wonderful restaurant in Santa Anita, about five miles from here. Oh, thank you. I think I'll order in. It's been a long day. Oh, good luck with that. They don't usually deliver here. I could make you something if you'd like. Just this one time, I can add it to your bill. Would you like anything in particular? Anything you have is fine. If we can do without animal products... Hmm, just give me a few minutes and I'll bring you something, okay? Cek dulu pesan yang tadi siang kita nggak balas ya chatnya. Tipe banget ya. berarti dia ngetiknya pakai amarah itu, saya so, benar-benar berantakan banget semua. Oke, okay. ini sesi yang menarik. It's not that Ed is lying. It's more like he's unconsciously repressed some of his memories or distorted them, but. Did he block things out himself or with the help of someone else? Hmm. 
Waduh, kayaknya clear Ada hubungannya sama si Glenn Menurut gue sih Yes, Claire was avoidant when I asked her about Ed's past. What if she played a part in that repression by being elusive, keeping quiet, pretending certain things never happened? What if Ed, aside from fulfilling his father's dream of becoming a writer, followed in his footsteps in other ways? What if... By driving himself off a bridge, Ed was trying to copy his father. Yes. It would make sense, unfortunately. What about his mother? How does one deal with a situation like that? Kalau dilihat dari dia nangis kayak gitu sih, kayaknya dia bakal ngamur sih sih. As far as I know, Ed doesn't have any siblings. I wouldn't be surprised if Maddie had decided not to have the child. Too many questions. I hope Robert has some answers. Hey, sweetie. You must be exhausted. Did you find a motel? You should have let me do it for you. You would have picked something way too fancy. Right. No. Yeah. Of course. You just deserve much more. So, tell me. How is that? You know I can't. But I'm paying for it. That's not going to work. No, no, yeah, of course. Uh, I know, I know. But he'll be all right, right? It's still too soon to tell, but it's not going to be easy. Hey, dish the dirt. So, what do you think of his Aunt Claire? Have you known her for long? Just over the phone these last few days, but uh, hey, don't change the subject. I don't know. I think she's manipulating Ed. Uh, yeah, I totally get it. Well, I have some bad news. She doesn't like me, does she? She called me a little while ago. On the one hand, she says you're very professional, and she likes how punctual and responsible you are. Oh. And the bad news? She's thinking about moving things out of Ed's room so you can bring in the equipment. Equipment? Like in A Clockwork Orange? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, physical therapy equipment. Walkers and stuff. I don't think she realizes you're a psychiatrist or a psychologist. What is it? Uh, I always forget. Both. Really? Well, the lady has a whole different picture. Um, I still don't understand why that's a bad thing. Hold on. Ed hates psychiatrists. I'm sure Claire does, too. No, no. Uh, yeah, for sure. When they find out. Ed already knows and seems okay with it. As for her, time will tell. Give me a second. I need to think. Yeah, sure. Take your time, sweetie. I'm in no hurry. Although I did order some dinner, and it should be here any minute now.
What do you know about Ed's first Vertigo episode? Not much, really. He was eight or nine. He was in bed for several weeks. Do you know what triggered it? His father. He, um, committed suicide. I figured. How? He jumped from a bridge. And you didn't think to tell me this before? Well, I, uh, no. It just slipped my mind. Ed is following in his father's footsteps. And his mother? I think she died in a car accident. Robert. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. How did you meet Ed? Through a mutual friend, one of his college professors. She gave me his manuscript, I loved it, and we met up. The novel was a diamond in the rough, but it needed a lot of editing. Lucky for him, he was talking to the best editor in Los Angeles. It was a few months worth of work. He would come over, we'd read, talk, drink. You and Ed, were you pretty close? Yeah, kind of. He became a good friend of mine until Vera... Robert? Yeah, uh, no. Sorry. Are you all right? Yeah. No, um, I don't know. Yesterday, no, um, the day before yesterday was the anniversary of Veronica's death. I completely forgot about it. It's been eight years, and that's never happened to me before. Do you want to talk about it? No. Yeah. It's fine. It's just weird. It's like I'm... I remember. You said this would happen, didn't you? In our last session. Possibly. Oh. Dinner's here. I'll be right back. Ah, take out. A bachelor's best friend. Hey, how's Lou? I'd rather not... Oh my, a visit? This late, doctor? Oh, come on. I eat too. Yeah, right. Uh, of course. I'll leave you to it, sweetie. Bon appétit. <laughs> Talk soon, yeah? Bon appétit. <sighs> Mrs. Lomas, your dinner's gonna get cold. You should have told me first. Adam. I wanted to tell you as soon as I saw you. It didn't seem right to tell you on the walkie-talkie. I should have heard it from you, not by accident. Kid. We have to find my aunt. We'll find your aunt, and the son of a bitch that killed your uncle. She's alive, right? She's alive. 
Harley is getting ready for the biggest search party you've ever seen, Adam. We've already got over a hundred volunteers coming. We'll find her. All right? Let's go. Sure you don't want me to go down there? I've done this before. Just pay attention. Give me more or less slack when I tell you to, okay? You think there's a connection, don't you? Between my uncle and Ed Miller. According to the forensics, your uncle died... ...was murdered. ...a little over a week ago. Nine days ago today... ...Miller tried to kill himself. We are talking pretty much the same day that Miller's car... Went over that cliff. And then Jackass says he was riding with a girl and a baby that no one's ever heard of. But firemen went down and didn't find anything. We don't put out fires and they don't find things. All right, go for it. <clears throat> I'm on the ground. I'm on clipping, all right? Roger that, boss. <sighs> I skipped the monthly dinner, Nick. Hmm. No reason. I... just didn't feel like it. I don't know why. Just didn't. You know. I just stayed home, watched some stupid show with Marcello. Maybe if I had gone... None of what happened is your fault. The real culprit is out there, and we're going to find him, okay? I get why you feel that way. And I have no idea how one gets rid of that feeling. However much time goes by. All I know is that it's pointless. It's like a busted pipe. The more you force it, If that doesn't make you smile, <laughs> I don't know what will. Asshole.
Jesus to be born. Are you getting poetic with me? <laughs> you asshole. Cek botol dulu Son of a bitch Adam, tell Harley to call forensics. We've got work for them. There's no traffic now. You know how it gets. If we don't leave before sunrise, we don't get there until lunchtime. I mean, honestly. <sighs> Next week, we should leave at a reasonable time. The kids need their rest. You're saying that as if I didn't care. Not again, please. I'm their father. Are you saying I don't care? said that, John. No okay. one. You're not gonna win this fight. Mm -mm. It's over.
Okay. Why am I? T- iya. Mungkin sampai sini dulu ya. Emang sebentar sih uh, mainnya. Cuman scene-scene ini cukup intens sih dari hmm, ya kita tadi conversation sama si Robert terus kita uh, bikin kesimpulan tentang konsultasinya tadi terus habis itu juga hmm, ngelihat kejadian tabrakan uh, waktu kejadian tabrakan mobil yang dikenalin ayahnya si Ed ya emang lokasinya sama persis ya sama yang Ed lakuin terus iya ternyata ngeri juga itu kecelakaannya bapaknya nolongin Ed untuk bawa keluar duluan istrinya kayak masih di dalam pingsan anaknya yang baru lahir itu uh, nangis dan akhirnya meninggal di mobil itu ya cuma satu fakta yang kita tahu berarti si mamanya Ed itu melahirin anaknya yang bukan aborsi ya mungkin segitu dulu ya video kali ini kita lanjutin lagi nanti oke okay, thank you yang udah nonton bye